All right, turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 15. Book of Acts chapter 15, we're rolling right along. And we're going to look at the very last part of the book. I'm sorry, of the chapter. The last six verses, we're going to look at verse 36 and following. Acts 15, 36 through 41. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where he had preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them in Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul took Silas and departed, uh, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Verse 41, and he went through Syria and uh, Cilicia, confirming the churches. Let's pray. Father, I pray that, uh, actually, Holy Spirit, I pray that we would get what you have for us tonight, whatever that may be. Our, our needs are different. <clears throat> We're different people. We have struggles with different things. Um, but you know exactly what each and every one of us needs tonight. And I pray uh, that somewhere in the message that, um, that you will prick all of our hearts. I mean, that's why we come. I, I hope, I hope we come that we might grow and that we might seek and pursue the knowledge of Jesus Christ and, uh, and learn to be more like him. So I pray that goal, I pray that, um, I pray that hope will be uh, confirmed, will be established tonight. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Contention is the title of the sermon tonight. And um, Acts chapter 15, lest you think that I <laughs> worked one up special this afternoon, uh, it's contention. We see a contention here, and I've often read through this and and thought, you know, wow. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm excited to share this tonight. Um, and I think that you will be too, you know, when it's all over with. I, th I think that um, there's a couple good lessons here that we can learn um, from, from this chapter. Contention. What is a contention? It's a dispute. That word means a dispute and anger. It means a hot. It means a hot dispute. It means to be angry. And um, we see this happening between Paul and Barnabas. In Acts chapter 13, Mark, John Mark, left them and, um, and went back to Jerusalem. And so on this next second missionary journey, Barnabas says, look, let's take Mark again. Paul says, ain't no way, Jose. That's in the Greek. <laughs> We're not taking Mark. Mark's a quitter. He's a quitter. And, and, and hey, got nothing against Mark personally, but he's a quitter. And, 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 and the work of God, you know, deserves better than that. Barnabas says, look, man, but, you know, we need to let everybody make a mistake. People can make mistakes, right? And Paul says, well, they can. Uh, but, but let him join in another ministry, but he's not going with me. And Barnabas and Paul had a big argument over it. And the contention was so, uh, was so sharp that they decided to split. They decided to not go with one another. And um, I don't believe, though, I do not believe for a second, I don't believe for a millisecond that, that, that when they left, that they left kicking dirt and throwing rocks at each other. I don't believe that. I don't think that when they left that they thought, Paul thought, well, I hope you don't, you know, we'll just see. You're going to take that loser with you. God's not going to bless your work. And Paul takes Silas with him. And I don't think Barnabas looked at him and said, you know, uh, you go your way. You know, we'll go our way. And, and I no, I don't think that they wished ill will upon, upon each other whatsoever. I think it's clear. God says they had a sharp contention. And that it meant they got mad. They got angry with one another. But I think now, and I don't know that you read it this way, but this is the way that I read it. This is what the Holy Spirit's telling me. I think that when they decided to go different directions, that they did that for the, for the, for the, uh, the, the, the good of the work of God. I think that Paul said, I, th I think that, here's what I think. I think that at the end, that Paul looks at Barnabas and says, look, 
look, I just cannot in good conscience let Mark go. And I think that Barnabas looked at Paul and says, look, I get it. I mean, I understand, but I've got to take him with me. I've got to take him with me. And I think my, my understanding is knowing the heart of these two men, I think that they just said, okay, then, then you know, uh, Barnabas, you take Mark and you, you go that way and I'll take Silas and we'll go this way. I think that they left there having the situation resolved. And, and that's the way that I see it. And that's what the Holy Spirit has put on my heart. I don't believe they parted as enemies. I'm not sure that I've ever read it that way. I'm not sure that because I you know, haven't uh, never preached anything out of Acts 15. I'm not sure that when I didn't just kind of read through it, I thought, man, they got mad at each other and just, just went different directions. I do think they got mad at each other <laughs> for a period. I do think they went in different directions, but I do think that it was a godly parting and that they prayed and said, okay, Godspeed as you go that way. And, 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 and that, uh, the other said, well, Godspeed as you go that way. Let's just, let's just, and we got two teams now. Let's just tear it up, you know, for the Lord with two teams. So, um, I think that they both had, had a passion for God's work. And I believe that. And, but, but in this particular situation, it put them on different sides of the fence. So I want to look at the reaction of Paul, both Paul and Barnabas, as they, as they, um, as they argued, as they were in the middle of the contention about whether or not to take Mark with them. All right, number one, point number one. I got two points tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Point number one. I want to, to, to stand straight up and right off the bat say that Paul was right. Okay? Here you have John Mark in chapter 13 leaving the missionary trip to go back to Jerusalem. There's no doubt that he had responsibilities. They, they didn't just call him along. And, and No, he had jobs to do. He had responsibilities to care for. And yet he turned and left and went back. I understand Paul being angry. I understand him uh, uh, and, and possibly even Barnabas on the trip saying, Mark's son went back and left us empty handed. We have to figure out how now, not only to cover our responsibilities, but we have to cover his responsibilities also. Paul knew, I believe, that, that, that the work of God was at stake, the work of Jesus Christ, and, and every man should be sold out, ready to go to the cross themselves if need be. Not little mama's boys running home, running back home for any and every reason. I think that's the way that Paul looked at this, like, okay, I mean, he turned, look, he turned and went back and, and left us. We don't have time for that. Look, we don't have time for that. We're doing the work of God. And, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're going out here and, and, and doing the best that we can to, to take the gospel to everybody. We don't have time for people that have issues and, and, and God help them, but you don't need to be with us. We're on the cutting edge. We're, we're the tip of the spear. And uh, yes, and serve somewhere else, but not with us, I believe is what Paul was saying. There are two things that are not for the weak. There are two things that are not for the faint-hearted. Marriage and the ministry. And it's true. Marriage, it's tough. I mean, except for Brenda's in my marriage. It's perfect. No, it's hard. It's hard. You know, it, it's hard. And uh, two, two, two different people lay, uh, living under the same roof. And, um, but obviously it can be done. Many of you have done it. And my, my wife and I, praise the Lord, we, you know, we've been married 36 and a half years now. And, and we're rolling along. And, but marriage is tough. And ministry is tough. Okay? Ministry is tough. And neither place, uh, you know, it's so funny that young people just enter into marriage on a whim. I don't want to say, you better think about this. You better know what you're doing. You better know what you're doing because you're going to be challenged. Ministry is the same way. Uh, what I talked about the other day, you know, people that are mama called and papa sent, you know. God didn't call an individual. Mama called them. And, uh, and, and then Papa put his money behind it and made it happen. And the, and the person literally had no business being in the ministry. None. None whatsoever. Um, it doesn't make them bad. It's just that they were not cut out. You know, uh, uh, you know, 
I, and, and, and some people's lives, I don't think they had the calling of God on their life. You say, how do you know that? I don't know that. But I, I, I kind of I make, that, make, make that judgment by what I see. Uh, ministry takes people with grit. And I think this is what Paul's saying. We need people with grit. We need people with stamina. We need people that will, will fight for the right causes. We need people with passion. We need people that are courageous. Um, and, 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 and without a doubt, this is true. But the truth of the matter is, is we need to get these, these that grit in our crawl from the Lord. When it comes just from us in the flesh, it's going to fail. And if it's not doesn't fail, it's going to get all out of whack and, it, and it's going to become mean and it's going to become angry. So we get these things. We get courage from the Lord. We get passion from the Lord. We get strength from the Lord. And uh, the arm of flesh will fail us. We shouldn't trust. We shouldn't trust in our grit. We shouldn't trust in our courage. You know, it's the grit and courage and stamina uh, and passion we get from God, from the Lord. John Chrysostom who was one of the most gifted speakers in, the, in early church history. His name meant golden-tongued. John was sent from Antioch to what was then Constantinople, where he preached fearlessly in the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. His denunciation of the lavish ec ec extravagance of the rich and ruling class and his condemnation of excess infuriated many including the empress who arranged for him to be exiled. When he was told of this fate, Chrysostom said, responded, What can I fear? Will it be death? But you know that Christ is my life, and that I shall gain by death. Will it be exile? But the earth and all its fullness is the Lord's. Will it be the loss of wealth? But we brought nothing into this world and can carry nothing out. Thus all the terrors of the world are contemptible in my eyes, and I smile at all its good things. Poverty I do not fear. Riches I do not sigh for. Death I do not shrink from. That's courage. That's, 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 that's godliness. Paul, Paul was the one who wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 about the thorn in the flesh. And now he prayed for God to remove it. And God convinced him. God told him, though, that when you are weak, then you're strong. And he is the one that said, then I pray, I rejoice. I rejoice in suffering. I rejoice when bad things come my way. Because when I'm weak, then God is so much stronger in my life. So I think that, 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 that Paul said, we, we ought not shrink from suffering. We shouldn't shrink from homesickness. Look, I know what homesickness is. My first, two, my first month at college, first time I'd ever really been away from home for any extended uh, uh, amount of time, I rode home like every other day. There was no texting, you know, and I wouldn't, wouldn't call a mom and dad home collect every other day. I wouldn't want to fly. So I rode home. And apparently I didn't know. I just thought it was kind of telling how my first weeks were going. But my mom told me later, said, we thought you were coming home. We thought you were quitting. She said, I just, she said, but I prayed for you and prayed for you because, you know, just to hang in there and just to get used to it. I didn't realize that was the message I was sending, but apparently it was. So, but Paul, and so Paul said, we have time for that. We don't have time for people that are going to look back and say, well, I'm not really sure. No, you need to get sure about doing the work of God and need to commit to doing the work of God and need to stay out here on the journey and not quit and go back home. Paul was cut from the same cloth as David, King David. Paul was like, hey, let's just go cut the giant's head off. Yeah, but he's big. I don't care. It's not my battle. It's the Lord's. David looked down at the Goliath and said, he's not challenging us, he's kind of challenging God. And if he's challenging God, I know which side I'm on. I go down there, and, and he killed him, knocked him out, and then cut his head off. Cut his head off. Think about that now. Paul was sort of cut from the same cloth. Now we're out here to, we're out here to get after it. The souls of men are dying, and they will perish into eternal torment in the lake of fire. And we don't have time for people that are quitting and turning back. So I am encouraged by the passion of Paul. So my first point was I said that, that I'm, I'm landing on the side of Paul. I, I, I think Paul was right. Point number two, all right? 
uh, not only do I think Paul was right, but I think that Barnabas was absolutely right. I think he was right. I think they both were right. I believe, now look, John Mark was Barnabas's nephew. And, and I think that he saw in his nephew uh, a young man that had turned around, made a mistake, yes, but had turned around, and Barnabas wanted to give him a second what? Chance. Let's give him a second chance. Paul says, I don't have time for second chances. <laughs> and I identify with that. But uh, Barnabas says, well, I believe in second chances. Don't think that Barnabas, Barnabas was playing favorites either. You say, well, that was his nephew. What else was he going to do? Who was it that took Paul to Jerusalem and told the apostles and the disciples there, said, listen, we need to, I know everybody's nervous about this guy, but we need to accept him. He truly has been saved, and he's preaching the gospel. Who was that? Barnabas. Barnabas, the son of consolation the son of encouragement. Barnabas was an unbelievably encouraging person. When, when the people were like, don't bring Paul here, I'm not buying into that. It's just a ruse. It's a trick. He just wants to get a bunch of us in one place and wants to hook us up and take us all and, and, and throw us all in jail and kill some of us. Barnabas said, that's not it, guys. It's not it. Listen, he is what he saved. And God's going to use him in a great way. And he helped, he helped Paul, he helped Paul in establishing that relationship with the Jewish people whom just a while back he was persecuting. That was Barnabas. So Barnabas is not playing favorites. Barnabas is not saying, well, come on, man, what, what am I going to tell his mother? If you don't let him go, what am I going to tell his mother? That wasn't the case at all. Barnabas says, Paul, listen to me. Uh, John Mark has learned. He, yes, he made a mistake. He did. I agree. But he has learned from that mistake. And he needs a second chance. We serve a God of second chances. Not by a raise of hand, but let me pose this question to you. Have you ever needed a second chance with God? I have. I have, and so have every one of you. At some point or other, we've all failed him, and we've all failed him multiple times. We don't want him writing us off. No, we serve a God of second chances. I'm not proud of everything that has happened in my life since becoming a Christian. There's a lot of things I would go back and try to change and correct and do better. But God says there is no going back. We go that way. We go that way. We don't worry about the stuff in the back behind us. We, we're going through this. And God enjoys turning the page on a rough spot in our life. He loves that. He loves to say, look, look, when we come into his presence and kneel and pour our heart out and say, I am sorry. I am sorry that I have failed you and that I've acted this way. And maybe for a season of time, I've just neglected you and kind of just put you in back and didn't care. And when we return to him, God says, look, I am the greatest page turner of all time. I am the greatest. And yes, I see your heart and I know you're sincere. And yes, let's hit it again. I love that about Barnabas. I love, look, I love the passion of Paul too. And I loved the tenderness of a Barnabas that says, no, he deserves a second chance. What happened with that second chance? I've told y'all in here before, um, Mark turned his life around. Listen, when Paul was in jail and he wrote to Timothy, he said, bring Mark with you for he is profitable for the ministry. Same Mark. God used Mark, the same Mark, to write the book of Mark. I would say he turned his life around. 
And I would say that that turnaround came because Barnabas said, I believe in you. Sometimes I wonder, you know, of all the young people that are coming up and young kids and growing up in, 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 in maybe, you know, bad, what we would call a bad home, you know, uh, where there are a lot, a lot of bad things are going on and it just seems like they can't make it. And even kids that grow up in good homes. But then they get to a certain point and they kind of stray, you know, they kind of stray. Sometimes I wonder if we couldn't whittle that number down if we made a personal connection with that young person and said, nobody in this world may love you, uh, but you may think nobody in this world loves you, but I do, and I believe in you. Instead, we generally bash, we generally bash people that are struggling and in that rough spot of life. We generally look down our pharisaical nose and we bash them when what they really need is a Barnabas they need a Barnabas to come to their side and say, listen, come with me. I'll take you under my wing. And that's pretty much what uh, Barnabas did. Barnabas says, well, I'm taking Mark. And Paul says, well, then you take him. Hey, I'll pray for you. You guys tear it up over there. I'm going this way with Silas. And Barnabas became a mentor to Mark and, turned, and helped Mark turn his life around. Paul called Mark, a, in the book of Colossians, he called him a fellow worker, a fellow laborer. Mark obviously made a comeback. And I love a good comeback story. Tim, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who in the National Football League, who should win, who should win the Comeback Player of the Year award? Alex Smith. Alex Smith. There you go, buddy. Alex Smith. Was it two years ago? Two years ago, was in a football game and had his leg snapped in half. It took 17 surgeries. 17 surgeries it took. There was a time when they thought that that injury might kill him right early on. His life was put in danger by this injury. 17 surgeries later, look, how many of you remember Joe Theismann, that happening to Joe Theismann against the Giants? Joe Theismann didn't come back. Now, Joe Theismann was, was a little older, too, but he didn't come back from that injury. Of course, in this day and time, medical procedures are, are much better than they were back in that time. But nevertheless, Alex Smith came back and became the, the quarterback for the Washington football team. I got that wrong a minute ago, didn't I? The Washington football team. Uh, this year, started again in the National Football League. I love a good comeback. Am I a, uh, am I a football team fan? Well, yes, of mine. I'm not sure how you even talk about that now. Am I a Redskins fan? No. No, I'm not. I don't hate them uh, like I do the Cowboys, but, but, I, but, I, but, I, um, but I'm, not, I'm not a Redskins fan. But listen, I love a good comeback story. And I'm... And I'm I don't know if he's saved. I don't know anything about the guy, Alex Smith. But I know this, is he made a comeback. And I'm for everybody making a comeback. The gospel of Mark represents Jesus as a servant. Okay? In Matthew, Jesus is represented as the king of the Jews. In Luke, he's represented as the Son of Man. In John, he's represented as the Son of God. In Mark, he is represented as a servant. You find no lineage. You find nothing about his history. You read in the book of Mark chapter 1, and he gets going right away. His ministry just starts going right away. No talk about where he came from. None of that matters to a servant. And here you have the quitter. The quitter. God says, you're going to make a comeback. And not only that, in such a way that I'm going to use you to write a book that describes Jesus as the perfect servant, a doer. I like that. G. Campbell Morgan said, perhaps concerning this contention. And I like this. He said, perhaps his moral courage, uh, um, uh, John Marks, perhaps Marks, Moral courage was stiffened by Paul's severity and confirmed by the tenderness of Barnabas. In other words, G. Campbell Morgan is saying in, in, in Mark's life, maybe it took both. 
Maybe it took Paul's sternness to snap him out, to wake him up, and, and, to, and, to, and to show him that, look, it's a big deal. You just don't go out with, with God's apostle, you know, the apostle Paul and Barnabas. You don't say go out with them and just flippantly say, I think I'm going to go back home. And I think that he learned that from Paul's severity. And then he also learned uh, uh, his, his courage was confirmed by the tenderness of, Paul, of Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas never allowed personal resentments to come from this disagreement. 1 Corinthians 9, 6 says, well, I'm not going to quote it there, but it mentions, Paul mentions Barnabas in 1 Corinthians, in his letter to the Corinthian church, the first one. That letter was written after Acts 15. So the fact that Paul mentions Barnabas in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 shows you that oh, they're, they're still on the same page. This had a disagreement, had a disagreement, and, and decided, I believe, in a godly way, uh, decided that, okay, well, I can't have Mark going with me. I get it. I get it now. I mean, you've made that clear, and so I'm going to take him. You take him good, and I'll be praying for you. And so you're taking Silas. Yeah, I'm taking Silas, and I'm praying for you too. That's the way I think that they departed. I don't think that they threw rocks at each other and, and, and cursed at each other as they left. I don't believe that. And, uh, and, and I think that tonight the challenge for us is that we need to have a whole lot of Paul in us and we need to have a whole lot of Barnabas in us too. We need to have take a stand. We need to have grit. We need to have courage. Uh, we need to have that stamina and we need to have that passion that, that we are single-minded, single-minded, Going this way for the cause of Christ. But we also need Barnabas in us that says, yes, but let's not, let's not leave the wounded behind. Those that get wounded in the battle, let's, let's stop for a moment. Let's pick them back up and let's give them another chance. That's exactly what Barnabas did. So I'm for both of them. And I think they both are right here. And I think it's something that we can learn uh, in our lives as we move forward. All right, let's pray. Father, I do pray uh, that Holy Spirit, I don't know. I know what, you, I know what you ch you're trying to teach me uh, through this uh, in Acts chapter 15 in the end here. I, know, I understand and I'm uh, very clear on it. And thank you for teaching me. I pray that our church, I pray that those watching, I, I pray that those that are in this room or, or even those, hopefully, maybe, that um, uh, you know, they may hear about this sermon. Holy Spirit, I pray for your will to be done, whatever it is in their lives, and that they would respond. And, but, but on top of that, uh, uh, Father, help us to have a lot of Paul and a lot of Barnabas in us as we do your work, as we move forward on fire for God, doing the, the work of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, staying focused on that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, that concludes our service tonight. Look at that, 540. Yes, you're welcome. No, uh, thank you for coming back. Always do. Uh, uh, love our church. Love our church people. Thank you for coming back tonight. God bless you. Look, go out there and glorify God with your life this week. Glorify God with your life this week and do the things that he has planned for you to do. The works that he has planned for you to accomplish specifically. Don't miss out on them. God bless you.